Hi everyone, it's Miss Williard and you're watching Predator and Prey Relationships for the unit Ecology. So, we already know what a predator is and what prey is. We've been talking about those a lot in class, so predators. The hunter, the prey, is the hunted. And we're in the topic where we're talking about populations. And we've looked at types of population graphs as they relate to exponential and logistic growth. And now we're going to look at population graphs just focusing on predator and prey and seeing the relationship and how the amount of predators in a population depend on the amount of prey and the amount of prey in a population therefore in return depend on the predators. So we're going to look at graphs and things in a minute but first we're just going to kind of put this into writing. So predator and prey graphs. Increases in the prey population are closely followed by increases in the predator population. So we're going to be looking at wolves and moose. So if there's a whole bunch of moose around, then eventually there's going to be an increase in wolves in that predator population because there's more food for them to eat. They're going to be able to be full. They're going to be able to be satisfied. And therefore, they're going to be able to reproduce and have babies and further their population. So once you get that increase in predators, now the prey population is going to decrease. The wolves are going to be eating all of those moose, and there's not going to be as much, so they're going to decrease. Then there's not going to be as much food for the wolves, and the wolves are going to decrease. So that predator population is going to decrease. So they really rely on each other. When one increases, the other increases and then when one decreases the other decreases as well. So we've got our predator population declining now so the few moose that are still around there's not as many wolves to hunt them so they're going to be able to reproduce make babies so then the prey population is going to increase again and this cycle can continue indefinitely as long as the natural flow and order of things is not interrupted. So increases in the prey population closely followed by increases in the predator population. An increase in predators now results in the prey population decreasing. A decline in the prey population will now cause the predator population to decrease. With fewer predators, the prey population will now increase again. That sounds kind of confusing in a way just because it's a lot of increase, decrease, increase, decrease. So let's actually visually look at what's going on. We're going to look at a graph first then I'm going to kind of show you, then we're going to come back to the graph. So this is a predator and prey graph. If you remember from our energy pyramid when we were talking about food chains, there's more energy at the bottom of a food chain than at the top. So therefore, there's always going to be more prey than there are predators. So you notice the number of moose is greater almost at all times than the number of wolves, even though they do kind of fluctuate a little bit. So, and you'll see here, so the moose start kind of low as they start to increase right here wolves are starting to increase and as they decrease then the wolves so it just kind of fluctuates and keeps going up and down and up and down it's not exactly the same there is some lag time in there so let's picture this we've got a population we've got a few moose we've got a few wolves um, now this might represent hundreds of moose versus wolves not just one so we've got all these moose well there's only a few couple hundred wolves out there and there's hundreds of moose so obviously those wolves are not going to be able to get every moose so the moose are going to reproduce and make babies and get bigger and get bigger look at all of those moose go but then the wolves have been able to get these moose so they're going to start reproducing they're going to be able to have children they're going to get greater but as you get more wolves the moose population is going to start to decline because the wolves are, over, are going to overtake them Okay, so all these wolves coming in on these moose, moose are going to start to die out. There they go, bam, bam, cutting them out. Well, if there's not enough moose for the wolves to eat, then the wolves are going to start to decrease. And now, once again, there's not as many wolves, there's more moose, so then the moose can eventually start to reproduce as well. That population gets bigger. Wolves, once again, they're happy, they're fed, they can reproduce. And after we get all the moose reproduction going on, then we have the wolves coming in. 
and it just keeps going on and on and on with this cycle. So now there's more wolves, so the moose are, moose are going to start to decrease, and it can just keep going, and then the wolves decrease, and it just keeps on repeating indefinitely, and that's all this graph is showing you, is the relationship that one depends upon the other. If, you know, you're really, really hungry, and you're not going to have that much food, you're not going to be very happy as a wolf and you're probably going to fight your brothers and your sisters and your cousins and everybody to get that food and not everybody's going to be able to survive in general because there's competition. But if there's not many moose to begin with, it's not really going to be great for the wolves. But the predators help keep the prey population under control. If there were no wolves, there would be hundreds and hundreds of moose and they could reproduce almost to a certain extent exponentially until they hit those limiting factors. I'm going off on a little bit of tangent, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Long story short, the amount of prey in a population will also affect the amount of predators in a population. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something new.